When I was nine years old, my family and I moved from Florida all the way to New York. I'd never been on an airplane before, and I very distinctly remember staring out the window as we rose above the swamps and the housing developments, and then eventually the ocean filling our entire view. We landed a few hours later in a very strange land called Long Island, and everything here looked very different to me. The trees, the street signs, even the people. And as a confused child slowly making sense of this strange new world, one thing reminded me of my old home though, and that of course was the ocean. Whenever we went to the beach, I could stare out over the ocean and really marvel at how vast it was. I knew that somewhere on the other end lay my old home, and yet somehow in between was this seemingly endless expanse of bright blue water. I don't think I ever really lost this realization, this connection to how something so massive can still connect worlds thousands of miles apart. I think it's why as an adult I found myself regularly walking along the shore. It's almost a form of meditation, is sort of a process of trying to find peace as one person within such a big world. And as I did so, I quickly started finding little pieces, pieces like you can see right here. This here is a pretty nice little hunk of what you may be familiar with as beach glass. And they come in many forms, everything from shattered Snapple bottles to broken beer bottles and more. They erode over time, eventually developing these smooth edges and a sort of glossy, almost sandy glaze from exposure to salt water and waves and sunlight. They range in size from pebbles to bottlenecks and can be found all over almost any beach around the world. Once you notice one piece, you quickly start noticing others. And so that's why I would just go for a walk in my spare time, sort of idly searching for the next shiny bit to collect. But over time, I developed a sort of obsession with finding the next piece. I became a sort of expert at spotting how they glinted out from, say, a rock that shone just a little bit differently under the sun. I became, in essence, an expert beach glass hunter just by going out and just by doing it. And so you can imagine my surprise one day on one of my zen-like beach walks when I bent down to pick up my next beautiful piece of beach glass, only to pause realizing that I had seen it incorrectly, that what I held in my hands was not a polished piece of glass, but Instead, a cracked plastic bottle cap. Once I noticed one of those, I soon spotted another, and then another, and then another, until I was finding far more plastic than beach glass. I knew from some articles I had read online that these weren't great for marine habitats, and so I just kept picking them up. And as I did this, I started noticing other pieces of plastic too. Everything from bags to wires and pretty much anything else you can imagine. So my beach glass strolls soon transformed into beach cleaning excursions. Before I knew it, instead of hauling back 10 beautiful little pieces of beach glass, I was bringing home to recycle or throw out maybe about 10 pounds of beach trash, as seen here from a typical day's outing. Now in the three years since that first plastic bottle cap, I've collected over a literal ton of ocean plastic waste. Now this might seem like a lot, but it also might not seem like much if you consider the fact that this amount of trash was collected by going out on average once a week, season after season, and then year after year. Yet over this time, piece by piece, I've slowly grown into a sort of expert on beach cleaning. I've slowly begun to help to make a difference, however small, bit by bit. I should mention that I'm far from alone in noticing these issues. I teach writing at Stony Brook University, where many of my students major in the hard sciences. And so I often get research papers that deal with issues of environmental pollution, especially and increasingly ocean plastic pollution. These papers about the damage caused by this type of pollution particularly stood out to me because while they addressed a large-scale daunting issue like global environmental destruction, they were talking about examples of pollution that I could see right here in our very own backyards on Long Island. Also interesting was that the solutions presented in their papers were almost all large-scale. They suggest that government programs, policies, and other laws are really the way to solve these problems. Now, while these conclusions are indeed many of the large change solutions that we need to save our planet, I started to realize the more that I picked up that this was also an issue that I myself could have an actual impact on, just by adjusting some of my habits, in this case picking up trash whenever I found it, some to recycle, others just to remove from our marine habitats. One big misconception about ocean plastic pollution that I've learned, for example, is that it all comes from these evil, horrible people just throwing their trash all over the beach. 
Now, while this certainly does happen and it is a problem, it's actually not where most of the trash comes from. Oftentimes, you can tell this fact by the diversity of items that you will find while beach cleaning. Much of it runs off from places like tipped over garbage pails and streams and storm drains. Everything from shotgun shells to light bulbs to toothbrushes and much, much more. So my direct observations of finding all of these items not just confirms the research that my students have presented, but it also adds to the canon of knowledge, myself now being an expert of sorts by being able to help raise the awareness to the cause of and hopefully offer some potential conclusions to the source of these issues. I share these experiences with others, particularly through social media. They share them with their connections and that awareness slowly grows. In short, again, I've become an expert just by going out and just by actually doing something day after day, month after month, and now year after year. I figured out a small way to help, both by working to enhance the health and wellness of local marine habitats, while also keeping my eye on the larger prize, which is of course raising our collective awareness on the road to these large-scale solutions. We're so bombarded in the media today by so many striking global challenges that it can almost feel impossible for one person or even one group of people to really contribute much to solving certain issues in any meaningful way. But it's the same age-old argument of why bother voting if my one vote is so unlikely to make an actual difference. And while such a claim might seem valid while looking at it at a larger scale, I can honestly say that not only have I voted in an election where my candidate won by just one vote, but I've also collected plastic wires on the beach, the same exact types of wires I've seen wrapped around seagulls' feet as they hopped around unable to take flight. To them, one wire means life or death. So to them, one wire really does make all the difference. I like to use this picture as an example of the potential nexus between individual and societal change. This was taken on one random afternoon after class when I went to just do a random beach clean and I picked up about 20 straws in only about two minutes. And as I stared at them, I wondered, how many straws would be picked up if every American did this today? So I did the calculation and the answer came back and it was quite shocking because I found that it would be enough straws to draw a line from the earth to the moon and back and then to take a round trip road trip from my home in New York to my old home all the way back in Florida over 155 times. Now that's a lot of straws. And that's also the sort of mass societal change that we need. But until then, I can still help by removing 20 straws myself, by potentially saving 20 sea turtles, birds, or other marine life from choking on them. And so while we all work to promote larger societal change, remember to research what you can do at the local level and actually do it. Beach cleaning is just one example, of course. As with many societal issues, while fighting to implement the larger scale solutions, Remember that there's often a change that you can make to positively impact the world immediately around you. As long as you keep an eye out for it, you can be an expert too, and you really can make a difference. I myself am far from perfect. I know very well that I alone can't save the world, and I'm really not trying to, not on my own at least. But I am doing my small part to help make it a better place. I really think that in order to find happiness in life, you have to be happy with how you live your own life. Seeing something, however small, that you can do along the path toward positive change is indeed something worth doing for yourself, for your community, and ultimately for us all. I should also mention that technically, beach glass is a form of beach trash too, although perhaps not nearly as detrimental to marine life as plastic pollution might be. My hope is that one day we live in a world where finding any amount of trash is a relative rarity where I can go back to my beach hikes and really mar marveling at the awe-inspiring ocean that truly does connect all of our worlds, past, present, and future. Until then, I try to remember each individual fish, sea turtle, and seagull that my efforts really are working to help. To them, like I say, small changes make a big difference. To them, you really are saving their worlds just by doing what you can bit by bit, one piece at a time. Thank you so much. For watching and I really hope to see you at the beach one day soon.